and welcome to this first tutorial on the transform effects that are applied within Premiere Pro. This first tutorial is to introduce you to the transform effects and the next tutorial is to show you how we can animate those to create things called pips which you can see in the next tutorial. Okay so what are the transform effects? Now firstly these are not effects that are found in the effects tab over here these are all kinds of different effects which can be applied to a clip, be they audio or video effects, but you have to apply these to the clip to make them work. Transform effects are applied automatically to the clip as soon as the clip is used in your project. So for instance, at the moment I've got this Soft Focus C picture, and if I go through that you can see what it is, and there are effects, believe it or not, already applied. If I select the clip in my timeline, and I go up to the effects control panel you'll see that there already are a series of different effects applied one group called motion one called opacity and one called time remapping now I'm not going to cover time remapping except to say that time remapping is already animated and it's at a speed of a hundred percent in other words what it is saying is play this clip at its proper speed and there are other tutorials about how you can change the speed of a clip but this particular effect is applied but it just says play the clip as it originally came in so we can ignore that one the other effects are opacity and the ones under motion if I open the little twirly for motion you'll see that there are a number of effects again already applied we've got position scale rotation anchor point and anti flicker now, going with the bottom first, anti-flicker is a filter. Sometimes, if you have still images, particularly with very sharp edges, if you've got fine detail and sharp edges, and you play those back on an interlaced monitor, that's a TV monitor, not on a computer so much, but definitely on a TV, which is playing fields, upper field first, lower field first, whatever it is, sometimes those images will flicker. And if you want to stop them flickering, you pull this filter up, until the actual flickering stops. You can hit the spacebar to actually preview it if you have a, a monitor attached that you can preview it on. Now the downside is if you have to pull this filter up a long way you will soften the image but it will get rid of the flickering. So it's a balancing act. You end up with a slightly softer image but you get rid of the flickering and in my book flickering is definitely a no-no. So that's what the anti-flicker filter is available for but we don't need it because we're working with video images that aren't going to flicker on our particular system. However, we do have these other effects applied. What do they do? Well, to get to them, you can do it in two ways. One, you can actually play with the hot text. This is hot text. And as you can see, when I put my cursor over one of these orange numbers, I get a little finger or hand with a finger up in a two-way arrow saying that I can click and hold and drag right or left to change that property. And when I do so, look at the image in my program monitor to the right. Click and drag, and you can see that what I'm doing is I'm changing the position of that particular layer. Now, off the top of your head, you might think I don't really want to do that, but actually it comes in incredibly useful when you want to move things around, because all of these are animatable. We can animate them. Now, to reset these back to their default, you've got this little back arrow here, it says reset so click on that and it will take it back to how it originally was so you've got X and Y so X is going to move it left and right Y if I click and drag that it's going to move it up and down so we've got X and Y coordinates to actually move these things around and I can reset scale is exactly what it says it is if I move scale the whole thing scales up or the whole thing scales down so I can make it a lot bigger or a lot smaller notice also that we have a checkbox that says uniform scale if you uncheck that you actually have scale height and scale width and you can scale things so that they are not staying in relation to each other and again if you do that and then click the uniform scale it'll go back to being a uniform scale and you can only do one particular property reset that rotation is going to rotate the whole image in fact what I'll do is I'll scale this down so you can see it so if I scale that down a little and I start to click and hold and drag rotation you can see that I can make the actual image or the actual picture or the photograph or whatever the asset is I can rotate it to get a slightly different look and again you need to remember that these are animatable properties 
Now, anchor point at first doesn't make an awful lot of sense to some people. If I start to move it, people think, well, hang on a second, anchor point, isn't that just the same as moving X and Y? Well, no, it's not. I'm just going to reset these and move this back to, say, 65 again, 64. And at the moment, the anchor point is set slap bang in the middle of this image. So that when I rotate it, it rotates around the anchor point right in the middle. Now, if I then move the anchor point, it looks like the image is going left or right or up and down. But if I then move the anchor point and rotate, you'll see that it rotates not from the center, but from where the anchor point has been moved to. Now, the anchor point is staying right in the middle whereas the image is moving to one side and ro will rotate around that anchor point. So you can see where it is, and if I take it to there and I move the Y value, you'll see that I can actually take it right up to that top left-hand corner, and I can now rotate the whole thing around the top left-hand corner. So that's what all these properties are about. I'm going to reset them again. These properties are all about moving the layer around and changing how it looks. Plus, we also have this other one down here on its own called opacity. Opacity is the opposite of transparency. When something is transparent, you can see through it. When something is opaque, you can't see through it. So with opacity at 100%, it is fully opaque, you can't see a thing through it. But if I then pull it down, I can start to see other things underneath. At the moment, there is nothing underneath except the black background but I'm making it transparent. If I take it down to zero, it's completely transparent. It becomes invisible. Notice that opacity has already got this stopwatch clicked. Now, the clicking of stopwatches is all to do with animation, changing a property over time. And I'll be covering that in the next tutorial when I look at pips. Now, there is one other way, as opposed to scrubbing this hot text, that you can change the properties of a clip or an asset over here, actually in the program panel, as opposed to having to scrub hot text. And that's if you click the word motion. Now that I've clicked the word motion, can you see I've got handles all the way around my image, and I've actually got my anchor point showing me right in the middle. There's my anchor point. And I can grab hold of these handles, and I can start to move things around. And I can grab hold of the image and move the whole thing around in the window itself. So rather than having to work with the hot text, I can physically change it. Now there's a limit to what I can do. I can scale it and I can move it. I can't rotate it to be honest. It's better to actually rotate it over here in the effects controls. And I can't change opacity and I can't affect anti-flicker. But I can certainly scale it proportionally. I can't scale it ununiformly unless I uncheck this uniform scale option over here. Now I can change it in a non-uniform way to make it look very different. But I can still move it around. I can't move the anchor point. So I can't click and move the anchor point. Again, that would need to be done over here. But actually, if you watch, when I actually start to scrub, you'll see that the anchor point stays the same and moves. And I can clearly see to where it has moved to. So I can move it up and I can move it down, I can take it to a corner, and then when I do any rotation, that's the place where it's going to rotate from. So these are the effects that are automatically applied to any clip that you use in your project. They are there, ready for you to use under the effects controls. They look like that, and obviously you can open up the motion and you've got position, scale, you can either do it uniformly or ununiformly. So if you click uniform, that means it will stay in proportion to how it was originally created. You can change rotation, you can change anchor point, and you can change opacity to make something transparent or fully opaque. And by clicking on the actual word motion, if I click away so that it's not selected, you can't see any of these handles. But by clicking on the little icon or on the actual word motion, you get access to the visible view of the anchor point and you can actually do some of the scaling and some of the movement of the actual layer in the program monitor, which can save you an awful lot of effort. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to do a little bit of animation to create PIPs. And PIPs stands for Picture in Picture. <laughs>